It has been a long way, but the Hashira training arc has finally arrived. The episode opens up with Sanami the Wind Hashira and Openai the Serpent Hashira, alongside two other demon slayers who are all on a mission of tracking down a demon, one of which has kidnapped a young woman, their search eventually bringing them to a temple. Once these slayers enter, we get this amazing pan shot of all the demons in hiding, ready to pounce, and within just seconds, the fight begins where we get our first look at Sanami and Obanai using their respected breathing styles and something about seeing it finally animated gave me instant chills. Once the Hashira duo deal with the demons, they tell the other two slayers to retreat because they will take it from here and with no time wasted, Sanami and Obanai would follow the sounds of the woman screaming, leading them to even more demons, which Obanai even comments on the strange occurrence of demons grouping up like this. Up until now, now, demons have always somewhat stayed separate. It's rare we see this many together, but we soon find out why. Once the two Hashiras reach the roof of the temple, the demon they had been following throws a young woman off the roof and uses it to distract the Hashiras while he makes a break for it. Sanami would follow up the roof and would jump over after the demon, seeing nothing but a massive pit leading straight into the Infinity Castle. This was insane to see, and it's obvious now that the reason all the demons are grouping up like this will be because Muzan is making his next play. We then cut to Kaneo who is riding back to the butterfly mansion after a mission. She meets up with Shinobu where they speak about Nezuko's amazing development in conquering the sun and also hints about Muzan sending demons out to capture Nezuko. Now that Muzan knows about Nezuko he will stop at nothing to get that power for himself so he can also conquer the sun. We soon catch up with Tanjiro who seems to be making a healthy recovery even taking a page from Mitsuri's book with eating lots of food so he can come back even stronger than before. Tanjiro would also recall the events of the Swordsmith Village arc where he would realize that the opponents he went up against were incredibly strong, meaning that he would also have to get a lot stronger if he hopes to rival Muzan. Finally, arguably the most important part of the episode would come around, the Hashira meeting, where a lot of important details would be shared. Before the meeting, the Hashiras would sit and discuss Mitsuri's and Morichiro's amazing accomplishments of defeating upper rank demons. We would also get confirmation that it took both Mitsuri and Morichiro two days to recover, which is pretty much the same as the manga. Amane Ubayashiki would then begin the meeting, as Kagaya, the leader of the Slayer Corps, has fallen far too ill to even get out of bed anymore. Amane then goes on to explain that they will probably not see Kagaya host the meetings anymore, as he's reaching the end of his life. The Hashira are rightfully upset about this discovery, but we would wish all the best for the Ubayashiki family. Amane would then explain the existence of Demon Slayer marks. She would ask upon Morichiro and Mitsuri to explain their Demon Slayer marks and how to achieve these marks, as there have been legends told across generations about the Demon Slayer marks during the Sengoku period, around the time Yorichi was alive, the original Sun Breaver and the creator of the Demon Slayer Corps. Amane would then explain that when one person gets a mark, the people around them also achieve the mark as well, as if that one person resonates everyone around them. Of course, the first person to get the mark in the present generation would be Tanjiro Kamido, who was in the Swordsmith Village when Mitsuri and Morichiro achieved their marks. We then get some comedic relief with Mitsuri not really knowing how to put it into words, but Morichiro would take the lead and explain that although he didn't realize he had a Slayer mark at the time, he does remember the conditions that need to be met to achieve the Slayer Mark. For a Slayer to achieve the Mark, they would need their heart to pump at 200 beats per minute and have a temperature over 102 degrees. This then calls upon every ounce of strength from the Slayer to activate their Slayer Mark. We know from previous battles that this Mark allows the Slayer to achieve impossible feats and call upon an incredible amount of strength and speed. Amane then goes on to explain more about the Slayer Mark and although we don't hear the next part, and only see the expressions of the slayers, it is of course the details about the curse of having a mark. Now this next part is going to be manga spoilers so please skip to this time code if you don't want to hear this, but for those who already know, or those who would like to know, the curse of the demon slayer mark is that once the slayer achieves the mark, they will die before reaching the age of 25. This is why Guillaume afterwards would ask what will become of me, because Guillaume is 27 years old, which there are speculations and 
theories of what would happen to Kiyome if he achieves the mark, all of which I will leave to you to research personally. After the meeting has come to a close and Amine leaves, Giyu would begin to also leave, which would annoy Sanami, as the Hashiras still need to discuss the Demon Slayer training. The two Hashiras already don't get on very well, and it's only made worse when Giyu says he's not like the rest of them, of course referring to the way he feels about being a Hashira and having an inferiority mindset, believing that he shouldn't be a Hashira, all of which will soon be explored further into the season. Sanami would get up and confront Giyu, and for a second it looks like it's about to break out into a fight when Giyome uses his immense aura to calm the situation down, or I guess scaring the Slayers into calming down. We would then cut to Zenitsu, who is also returning from a mission, and would be greeted by the girls of the Butterfly Mansion. Again, we would have a more comedic relief as Zenitsu would be his usual self, but would be completely caught off guard by Nezuko now talking and being out in daylight. Zenitsu would be his flirty self and would ask Nezuko to marry him, in which Nezuko would reply, welcome home Inosuke. This would enrage Zenitsu, which I have to admit is quite funny. Turns out Inosuke has been spending time with Nezuko, making sure that she knows his name and constantly making her repeat it. I can only imagine what's going to happen when Zenitsu finally sees Inosuke, they'll probably burst out into a fight. Haganezga would pay Tanjiro a visit where he would drop off Tanjiro's polished Nitrine blade with Rengoku's guard on it, in remembrance of the flame pillar. Haganezga would also be his usual angry self, where he would make it clear to Tanjiro that he was in a lot of pain from the wounds that he endured last season, which is valid considering the guy continued sharpening a blade while being attacked by an upper rank demon. Genya is also in the same room as Tanjiro and would be annoyed about all the noise, but just as Tanjiro promises to keep it down, Inosuke would come crashing through the window. I know full well that Shinobu isn't going to be happy about that one. Speaking of Shinobu, we cut back to the Hashiras are planning the training for the rest of the Slayers and raising the bar of the Slayer Corpse. We get Giyome also saying that he will be asking for the assistance of previous Hashiras, so we will possibly see some old faces return. With the plans all settled, the Hashira training arc finally would commence, and we get to see the flashy sound Hashira once again, Uzui. We can see him training the Slayers on physical stamina so that they will be ready for their future sessions with the Hashiras. As I said, Tengen's training is first and he's in charge of physical stamina. Then we have Murichido's rapid movement training, Mitsuri's flexible training, Obanai's sword skills training, Sanami's infinite sword slash training, and finally, Giyome's muscle amplification training. During this lineup, we of course don't see Giyu on the list as he will have some other plot points in this season, and Shinobu isn't in this lineup either as she will also have some important character development too, which excludes them from the training. We will of course see more of the training when Tanjiro no doubt goes through it next episode. This will give us a closer look into every character and more details about them. The episode ends with Kageya in the worst state he's ever been in, and Lady Tamayo being approached by one of Kaguya's crows to be asked to work alongside Shinobu in the Ubayashiki headquarters, which she would be completely surprised to be invited, after all, she is a demon, but Kaguya would like Tamayo to work alongside Shinobu to research more about Nezuko, which is where the episode ends. What a strong start to the season. I imagine we'll probably have an episode dedicated to each Hashira's training through Tanjiro's experience with them. The season may even end with the beginning of of the Infinity Castle arc, considering we saw glimpses of it at the beginning of this season. As always though, if you're going to discuss manga spoilers, then please use a spoiler warning, but otherwise, click on this video if you would like to see more from me, Internet Stranger. If not, then I hope you have a great day. Pine Tree logging off.